Hi there. Uh, my name is Jabron. I'm from 733 Bryan Road. Everybody calls me G for short. I'm here to talk about uh, of the MPAL program. Um, yeah, I grew up in the PAL program, and I've seen it help so many kids. Help me personally to go graduate high school, go on to college. I got a degree in criminal justice. I'm looking to become a police officer myself. And I also volunteer my time trying to give, it, give back, so I think you guys should definitely help out the program as we speak. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Matt Grant. I'm from the MPAL program. Um, I enjoy this because it makes me, it gives me a purpose in life and it's what I love to do. I love to box. How you doing? My name is Victor Rodriguez. I live on Seven Country uh, Drive over there in Washington Park. Um, I started this program when I was about 15 years old. Uh, I came from a big family, but I also felt very secluded from them. And in this program, I found a family of my own, just like G, just like my brother Kiki, and everyone else that came down to the program. I volunteer my time as much as I can back to the program, and this program has done nothing but help us out, become better individuals, and make us like um, a lot better in our lives and find a purpose and meaning in everything that we do. We don't just help kids box. We don't just teach them how to defend themselves. We teach them how to be proper citizens and conduct themselves correctly around and in their household or outside or in school. We worry about the grades. We care about each individual student that comes down and we care for them just like our own family. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is David Mejia. Um, I'm here for the MPAL program. And I like to talk how about like how a lot of us go down there and we all feel safe. We all it keeps a lot of people off the streets, having a purpose to do like right after school. We box. None of us make fun of each other. We all we all if one of us is having a problem with something, we all show each other how to do it correctly. And how it's just a nice program to be at after school. You have nothing to do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Giovanni Hartford and I'm from Impel and I've only been there for a couple of weeks but they've been showing me a lot and teaching me everything that they can and that it's just a good program to go. It keeps me off the streets, doing bad stuff, keep me company and just show me the right path to go on. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Glenn Willett, I live on 1 Top of Auburn Street. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year's, and Hanukkah. We need more programs, after school programs like PAL. That's what we need. When we can take our youngsters and make them feel safe, at home, busy, out of trouble, they, then they grow up like Desmond, who you last night honor gave an award. That's what we need in our city. That's how we solve our problems. That's a worthwhile investment in our city. <coughs> Religion, holidays, when we respect each other's holidays and their religion, there is less hate in our community. And that's why I personally like to call that special tree a Christmas tree because it is not a holiday tree. But I also like to call the Hanukkah what it is. It's called respect. And when we respect everyone, all the angels that live within our community, again, we live in a, safety, a safer, more loving, and better educated community. The topic I want to speak about tonight is bonding. Bonding, bonding, bonding. We bond so much today. We bond to the limit. Yet how many times do we bond a program? And before it gets to be paid for, oops, we either move it to another area and bond some more, or we close it, or we destroy it. It's just gone. Here are a few examples. <coughs> A quarter of a million dollars for a nice skating ring. Sorry. The Black Tower. 
but the post office is now owned, now owned by Brady Sullivan. A quarter of a million dollars. Yes, it was a federal grant, but who pays? Who pays those taxes to the federal government? Lots of you who pay federal taxes. Yet we used it for two years, stored it for eight years, and on the eighth year, the Board of Mayor and Alderman then, not too long ago, 30 seconds, made a motion to throw it to the garbage because it had rusted a quarter of a million dollars. How about the $200,000 stage that we built at, at Singer Park, the soccer park that was there? Before we finished the roof, after paying $200,000, we cut it up into pieces and Three sold minutes. it as garbage. Another $200,000 wasted. The Fisher Cat Stadium. We hire people and contractors to do a job. So if they don't do their job, it's like an insurance. If the job is not done, you can go after the ones who didn't do their job. Why didn't we go after the contractors? And I don't like it when an alderman says, oh, that's potatoes. Millions of dollars in this city is not potatoes. I'll end with this. If you allow another million dollars now to add to the Fisher Cat, it will add another approximately four and a half, 450,000 to the bonding. We are already paying five million just out of the property tax. And remember, they actually need 3.4 million total. So once you add the entire 3.4, that's an added million plus. Go after the inspectors who didn't do the proper inspection or the contractors who didn't do their jobs. That's why we elect our officials for, not sweep it under the rug. And my last comment is this, Yago Decker. Your Honor, you and Joyce, when you were debating, you both said that Yago Decker is a negotiated thing to the unions. But as long as nobody on this board takes it from under the table, it is tabled right now, you will never negotiate it. So tonight I ask for one Christmas wish for the public, and that is one of you have the will to take out from under the table Yager Decker so that you can start negotiating the next contract. Merry Christmas. That's all we have, Your Honor. Good evening. My name is Eva Castillo. I live at 733 Bryant Road. I, did, I wasn't planning on speaking, and I had no clue what was going to happen, but now that I hear the PAL, I am the mother of a PAL kid, and I have seen all the PAL program does to help children. Now that we have a drug epidemic, we have heroin, we have people, kids drinking and using guns and being violent, the PAL is a safe heaven for people. When we have a bad history in the country of bad relationships with community and police, the PAL program helps to bridge that gap. It helps to make kids trust the police and be their allies and be mentored by police. So I urge you to do everything in your power to support the PAL and make sure that this program continues with their wonderful mission. Thank you. Um, my name's Victoria, and I really think MPAL um, is a good place. It helps kids, and it makes them feel safe, and it gives them a place to go than go out on the streets and do bad things, like heroin and drugs and drinking. And with MPAL, if it's upgraded, it gives kids more of a, like, more interest than, like, running around doing terrible things. And like they'll feel safer and protected and then it's like another home for us like we we enjoy coming and seeing our friends and Johnny's like another parent to us because he's we know we can talk to him and he's there to protect us and he encourages us and gives us good advice and it just it's really nice to know that I can go someplace that'll help me that'll help cheer me up and let loose all the anger and yeah, my little brother does judo, and he is fun. Just, it's all fun and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. And uh, one of the things that we are doing at PAL and try to do at PAL is that is teach kids more than just athletics. And that's why we encourage them to come here tonight and to learn how to advocate for themselves. And that's what you just saw, um, a bunch of children coming up here advocating for something that they believe in and that they love. Now, we're here to ask the, the board to issue a $400,000 bond for the Police Athletic League. Uh, the reason we're asking this is uh, the presentation is going to be uh, presentation is going to be uh, uh, about building on hope, and that's what you're going to be hearing about with that organization that we have partnered with. But I want to tell you about the Police Athletic League. Uh, the Manchester Police Athletic League is a registered nonprofit 501c3 organization. It was formed in 1992. The goals have remained the constant to foster and maintain positive relationships between the youth of Greater Manchester area and the officers who serve our citizens by providing after school athletics and activities. The Michael Briggs Community Center was originally built in 1910 by the parishioners of St. Augustine's, now St. Augustine's St. Anne's Parish. It opened in 2004. Uh, it, it opened and PAL is here because a lot of people that did a lot of hard work back then saw it, had a vision and then acted on it. Uh, and that includes Alderman Dan O'Neill, uh, who was a longtime member of the board and uh, recently stepped up, down as the <coughs> chairman of the board. Where the PAL building is, it's a sanctuary. And that's what the kids look at it as, a sanctuary. Kids go there every day for a safe place for a place where there's going to be a positive influence. If they have an issue, they have a problem, there's a police officer. Right now that police officer is uh, John. If uh, you could raise your hand. That's, uh, so, uh, that's uh, Officer John Lavasser. He's there every day for the kids. He teaches the boxing program and he coordinates uh, the activities as well as uh, maintains the building, looks after maintaining the building. Um, the building itself, it's in a lot of need. It's uh, roughly 35 to 40 percent of the total operating budget is spent on heating and electricity, roughly 3,000 a month. Uh, cost saving upgrades would allow more money for our programs and youth. MPAL currently serves between 50 and 100 youth each day. 8,600 youth who reside within a one mile area of PAL are at risk. Of those, an estimated 30% uh, live below the poverty line and 24% are minorities. We have over $130,000 just since we started this campaign committed to this project. We're confident that we're going to be able to pay off this bond in, in a matter of time, short time. The reason we want this bond and need this bond is we have to get this program jump started. We have committed money. We don't have that money yet. Uh, it's very important and you, during the presentation you'll hear why, why we need to get the, this money now and, and get going on the project. Right now, we have boxing, we have wrestling, uh, we have judo. We also provide uh, money for kids who might not be able to pay the money, the registration fee to pay other sports not connected with PAL. What we would like to do by upgrading this building is provide more services for the youth. Right now, a, a kid comes in, they, they're long-term activities. They have to show a commitment to do boxing, wrestling, and judo. A lot of kids don't want to do that. We want to be able to provide more activities for kids. For instance, uh, the, the kitchen. We have a, f a kitchen there, and we'd like to get that totally renovated, and we'd like to be able to teach kids cooking skills. They could do fundraisers, pan pancake uh, um, breakfasts, spaghetti dinners. We'd like to teach the kids things like that. We'd like, we have a homework lab. We'd like to upgrade that. We have St. A's kids and uh, students from uh, Southern New Hampshire University come in and assist us now. We'd like to be able to do daily activities with kids. We'd like to draw more of those kids we're talking about into the PAL building. I was there a couple weeks ago, and I can give you an example. Uh, somebody said there's a ruckus outside. I go outside, there's, uh, I talk to somebody, and there were a bunch of kids were fighting. Our kids, the PAL kids at the time, were all safe within our building. What we'd like to do with this building, we're going to be able to attract more kids. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to get all those kids that were out there fighting. We'd like to get them in the building. We'd like to be able to, to help them. And, and then you'll, you'll see what, what kids can really do when they're given an opportunity. We feel strongly about this. We're asking your support on this bond. Um, and we'll be uh, free to answer any questions afterwards.
You're good. You're good. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, members of the board, my name is Jonathan Holly. I'm an architect with Warren Street Architects. Um, I'm here representing Building on Hope. I'm actually here with a core group um, behind me, Emily Chakra, Rick Burchard, Karen Vanderbeeken with Easter Seals, um, EJ Powers. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a strong group that have been together now for since 2009. I have a presentation here. I hope it doesn't bore you, but it's going to talk a little bit about Building on Hope and what we've been able to accomplish since 2009. And um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about what we hope to help MPAL um, be and be a catalyst for something more than just a paint and paper renovation, if you will. So if you would bear with me here. Let's see. We're going to start with... Before it here, my life was really difficult. I had addiction problems. I had anger problems. A bunch of kids who have problems like everybody else. It's a facility for boys who, for various reasons, can't live with their own families. We had a project to renovate a facility, what we call the Coal House. This is a community where people really help one another. When we first started out, we weren't sure what kind of response we were going to get but it has just been tremendous. We have a new porch now on the side of the house. The front entrance has been completely changed and we're gonna go inside to see what it looks like. I wanna make sure that the people know how much this Pepsi Refresh project has meant to us. We weren't sure how much we were gonna get in in-kind donations, products and services, and we knew we needed a little money. We were able to secure a $5,000 grant, which has been so helpful to us. Everyone wants to be a part of this project. Everyone wants to lend a helping hand. It's, it's incredible and inspiring. It will make a huge difference in their lives, I'm sure of it. That video was produced because because we got the grant for Pepsi. That was part of the catch. We had to do that for their own marketing piece. But so as I said, Billion on Hope it was um, founded, if you will, in 2009, and um, it really is just an ad hoc group of individuals that have come together to do um, a barn raising, if you will, a renovation for a nonprofit every other year. So in in 2010, the first project we chose was which was the Kroll House. Um, which you just saw on the video, um, that was completely funded in pro bono, in-kind goods and services. It was a complete renovation. Um, we put an addition on the building so that the kitchen could accommodate the seven kids at one table. Um, everything was donated. I mean, and, and the amazing thing there is that um, six years later, the kids still treat it the same way, the building is still immaculate, and they see it as a stepping stone in the program. It's one step before they go out on their own. In 2012, um, we actually went out and did applications, and I believe we got 10 or 12, and again chose another project in Manchester. Girls Inc. Was, is a, an old church building on the west side, um, and we attacked it in the same way. Um, you'll see some pictures of that. Um, there was roughly $400,000 raised, and what happened there and has sort of become the, the, the real essence of building on hope. It became a catalyst to something more. We went in and we talked about um, just doing a, essentially the same thing that we did at Girls, Inc., and we got so many volunteers. We had the electrical union from Nashua come up, and I happened to leave the project for a couple of hours in the morning, and they had literally gutted the entire basement. We weren't going to touch it, but they were going to make sure that it was done right. Um, in that, um, in the momentum that was created there, Girls Inc. actually took on a little bit of debt. We did some other things that they knew they weren't going to be able to do um, in the future. Um, and you'll see some photographs of that. Um, last May, um, we went out again for applications, and I believe there were 16 or 17 applications from as far away as White, 
uh, Whitefield um, to Hampton, um, uh, all the way to the west to New Ipswich. And again, we chose a project fairly close to Manchester, Opportunity Networks, um, is a phenomenal program that had actually applied the year before. Um, and we thought the project was too big. And um, Emily, our resident angel behind me, convinced us to go and talk with them and see the facility. This is a facility where um, they manage uh, children and adults with severe disabilities that um, they get them out into the workforce. And at the time, I believe they had maybe 80 clients. Um, we were so confident that we wanted to do the job that the board decided that they were going to go, they had a banker on their board, and they were going to figure out how to get the other half of the project. It was roughly a $750,000 project. We committed as Building on Hope to raise um, half of that, and they committed to mortgage and to fundraise and, and to pull the other piece together. And we accomplished a $700,000. This was a program and a building that, a wonderful program, but the building was in awful shape. And they were losing clients because mom would come and bring their child and they'd go, I'm not leaving them here. Since May of 14, I believe that they've almost doubled their client base. They have a waiting list now, and you're gonna see some, pro, some uh, photographs of that. Really what happened this last year is, I think, I'll speak for myself, Building on Hope, we've really become to acknowledge that we are a catalyst for something to happen. Much more than a little extreme makeover, it's, it's what we bring to the table is the opportunity for the, this nonprofit to think outside the box and really vision what they could be rather than to be held back by the, the facility that they have. And that's exactly where we find ourselves with MPAL. So, Again, this, you saw this, um, this is the Kroll House was, that was done in 2010. Um, Emily on the right-hand side actually did this kitchen. Now, the model that we do is we enroll, uh, our motto is many hands make for light work. Um, so again, the model is that we enroll a number of designers, they each take on a room, they're responsible for raising um, their own funds for their own, for the, for the fit up. We support each other in doing that. Um, it really is to the level of an extreme makeover, similar to what you saw on ABC TV. This was the living room, flat screen TVs were donated by Hoyt. We, we do this in such a way that we create a party, we make it fun. They had a band at the end. They, they, the students that were living in the house at the time had never been to a hotel, never, never stayed. They took these kids out in a limo, had their hair cut, brought them back in fashion. Um, and I believe all of them have gone on to be productive um, members of society. This is Girls Inc. Um, this was the old church uh, that we renovated inside as a classroom. There's a room downstairs, a lounge. Um, I do believe that the mayor was here for the christening of that. Um, we marched, I think, about 150 girls up the hill and much to their surprise, the entire building was redone. Um, this is Opportunity Networks, they had an old industrial condo that literally had holes in the wall with ceiling tiles falling down. Um, the picture on the right is now the lobby. As you enter the space, there's a waterfall. It, it just has transformed their business. Um, the centerpiece of that project was a theater um, in the middle of, of the space. And again, we probably had 400 individuals and more than 150 businesses that have stepped up um, each time in, in accomplishing these, these results. And all of these projects, the theme is it's about the kids. And that's um, when, when we took applications for this coming May 16 project, um, that was the real selection of MPAL. That was the impact that they have. It's the, it's the status of the relationship with kids and police all over the country. This is a model for what PAL can do around the country. So what we're proposing, this is the building on the corner of Lake Avon Beach, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's the old St. Cecilia um, community building. Um, it's been reskinned. We're hoping to do something on the outside to make it more of a monument. Um, again, a little bit about their mission. They do a lot of, of coaching around 
uh, boxing and judo and and there's a lot of interaction with the police force and the volunteers there but they also have other programs um, and I, if I speak off track here please correct me but I, I was out to dinner the other night at the back room and bumped into somebody I hadn't seen in 10 years and he told me that his child had gone through the MPAL program in an associated football um, program and he went on to be the central captain he went on to be the captain of the Norwich football team and he he told me that um, it was the MPAL program that that set him on the right path um, again the the building has been designated to the uh, um, uh, I'm forgetting the word here but um, it's been named after Michael Briggs um, and uh, he stands as, as, a, as a beacon for all the kids that go through here. Um, it's programs. We have, um, there are 8,600 kids within a mile radius of MPAL that are at risk that have the opportunity to come here. Um, you know, kids don't know that this exists. And part of what we're hoping to be is the catalyst that, you know, makes this building a beacon um, really transforms and makes it a welcoming place for kids to come. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the scope of work. The, the scope of this project is roughly a million dollars. We've, we've gone back and forth between could we do it for 800? It really is a million dollar project. I've done a hundred of these. I've estimated them. I, I know what they are. The building is a four-story building. The top two floors are not used. Um, it's roughly 8,000 square feet on a floor. The basement um, has a boxing ring and gym and support offices with one small bathroom. Um, there's no handicapped facilities. The first floor um, is what was the main community room, has a judo mat that, is, that covers most of the floor, which doesn't allow the building to be used in, in, a, in more than for judo. Um, there's a raised stage. There's a kitchen that um, is non-functional. I mean, it, it is not working. Um, and again, there are some minor utilities, bathrooms that are not ADA compliant. They're not, I mean, the building is very old. It hasn't been touched in probably 80 years. Um, we have been meeting with MPAL for six months. Um, these meetings start once a month. We meet every Friday morning at 8 o'clock. The meeting lasts for an hour. Um, we have 15 interior designers that have already um, committed to a room. They've done their designs. They're starting to talk with vendors and, and corporations for donations and, and material donations to do this work. Um, we will, after the new year, um, go, to, go to a meeting schedule of uh, every other week. Um, and then when we get to about March, through the build in May, we will meet every Friday morning. And I will tell you that those meetings start out with three or four of us around the table. We will have 150 people in the room, everybody excited to talk about their piece that they want to do. Um, these are just some quick um, proposed uh, floor plans. I'll just acquaint you. This is the first floor as you come in. There's a lobby that will be redone. There are bathrooms that will be, be made code compliant, handicapped bathrooms. There is a full kitchen, a full working kitchen, commercial kitchen that will be brought up. We're talking about lowering the stage area that's raised right now so that the judo program can be moved in there with a movable wall. And that allows this large community room to be opened up for dinners, breakfasts, and other functions that they can't do now because they can't physically move the mat. There are rooms along the back hall that are, will be classrooms and storage and some office space for the coaches. Um, downstairs, again, we're putting bathrooms with showers that don't exist today, some office space, redoing the boxing area and all of um, the exercise and um, physical ed program that they have. This project is, as I said, between 800 and, and a million dollars. And I think it's fair to say that Building on Hope is willing to commit to raising 250 to 300,000 of in-kind services. That's our goal. That's enough to do a paint and paper 
you know, in the building. We've met with both the building department and the fire department, and they've told us that if we do anything more than paint and paper, we need to bring the building up to code. There's an old steam boiler downstairs that um, there is no ventilation in the building. Um, there are fire code issues. There are no, the, the bathroom facilities, the plumbing facilities. The building really is, um, it's an antique. It's 80 years old and it's, it's functioning with, you know, to what they have, but it, it's, it's not exploding in terms of the program. What we're asking the city for is a 400 to $500,000 bond. And what, that would be used to completely do an HVAC system for the project. Um, new boiler, new ventilation, air condition the building, all new bathrooms. We're talking about at the level of an extreme makeover. Everything would be tile. Everything would be, it would be a, a space that will serve this inner city community for many, many years um, down the road. The biggest thing that I, that I just want to impress upon you is that this, this bond is really a momentum um, item. It, it will give us the status to go out and ask these corporations and these big vendors to, to jump on board. And, and I'm confident that, you know, with the city's commitment and backing, that people will start to do that. In fact, I got a call this morning. I was very excited. Um, Jerry Perone told me that I could mention this. He's with Granite State Plumbing and Heating. Um, he happened, I think, to talk to Brian today. <coughs> They're willing to step up and and take on the HVAC system. To what extent? That's not been decided. I've had a you know 20 minute conversation with him. Um, they're a 40 million dollar a year company. They're part of a, a cooperative, a billion dollar plumbing and heating. He says that he has the buying power to to get the equipment, to get the manpower to do this. It, what we're looking for is to be a catalyst for this project to be something more than paint and paper, and and that's where this bond comes in. If we have the backing of the city and we can move forward, um, I'm confident that this, this is gonna be an amazing project. The downside is if, if we wait and we don't get the bond, I'm not sure that we, if we wait till January, February, I'm not sure that Building on Hope can even catch the momentum to make the May deadline. You know, we may have to postpone, we may have to, we don't know what we're gonna do. This, this bond is absolutely imperative as we plan to go forward. Um, and that said, will you allow me one last video? <laughs> Tonight we want to open the doors of the Briggs Center for four purposes. The first is to thank the courageous men and women of the Manchester Police Department who dedicate their lives to serving this community. The second purpose uh, this evening is to introduce you to the Briggs Center the Manchester Police Athletic League and its transformational impact uh, on the Manchester community. The third reason is to familiarize you with Building on Hope, which is an organization of volunteers that's completed over a million dollars in renovation projects to nonprofit facilities over the past six years. And then lastly, tonight you're gonna learn how together you can join us in transforming this building so it can better serve the 8,600 at-risk youth that live within just a mile of this location. Oftentimes the nonprofits are struggling just as hard as the people they're helping. It's kind of ironic in a way, you know, that the helpers are struggling. And so the question was, who helps the helpers? And that's what Building on Hope was invented to do, is to go in and find those organizations that are already doing great things, that are already lifting people out, out of their circumstances into a better life, and help them do that better. This is going to be a facility that not only can the neighborhood use, but certainly the kids that are here. And I know that this facility here is going to be something we can all be proud of. I know that they have a very tough project to work on. They've got to raise some money, and I hope that the city will stand behind a project that's been here and named after somebody that gave his life in the neighborhood. With this project, we want to be able to bring more kids in here. We want to be able to, it's a safe haven here. The other day there was a uh, ruckus outside, I was here. There's a ruckus outside and there were kids fighting. The kids took off and I said, oh, all the kids in here are safe. All the kids weren't involved in there. So we'd like to get all the kids, including the kids that were out there fighting, we want to get them in here. 
So Mary Ann Briggs uh, is here with her family. Um, she lost her son, Officer Michael Briggs, um, who actually patrolled this neighborhood. He had an amazing connectivity with the children in this neighborhood. He was well regarded. Um, the kids loved him. Um, so it's fitting that the Powell Building is named after Michael. Across the country, the divide between law enforcement and the communities they serve has never been greater. But I think we have an opportunity here in New Hampshire, the first in the nation state, to change perceptions and to actually show the nation that Manchester, New Hampshire, our community is united as one and can be a beacon of hope for the entire country. I remember first starting uh, at the Powell Gym, starting boxing. I remember our first meeting my coach, Johnny. Uh, from then on, he was always so nice to me. He's like always like been there for me. He's like a father figure to me. And he's just like one of the greatest men I've ever met in my life because when things are bad at school or at home, he'll talk to me and he'll actually help me. Like He helps me cope with stress it's just one of the greatest things anybody could ever do. Coach Johnny is just... Can you yourself clap for him, please? That's all I have for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Questions? Hold them in long. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the capacity... Uh, the capacity expansion, do, do we have a number on what we hope to expand as far as youth uh... we we really haven't really set even set a limit on that we that building can accommodate a lot of kids uh, on the on the fire code and we could fill that building up with kids okay so so this this project will allow you to expand capacity for youth right more, more programming and more kids okay great thank you Anything else alderman lavasser then barry two most expensive items in a renovation are bathrooms and kitchens why do we need a kitchen? And I'm, 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 when you say a full kitchen, I'm, ex I'm thinking ventilation all the way three floors for the hoods, or are we talking minimal kitchen with a ventilation out the first floor? Anybody know? No, this is, we're proposing a, a full commercial kitchen, full ventilation, a hood, Ansel system, the whole bit. Well, that's 100 grand for that kitchen. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, is there, what's the reason for a kitchen? I mean, um, we feel that there's a number of programs. There's, there's the opportunity that a kitchen brings with being able to bring the community in, not only the kids, but the parents, the families, that they know this is a safe haven, that it, it's going to expand that way. And people don't stay overnight, do they? No. Oh, okay. And uh, last question is, um, are, is the city of Manchester on the hook for the bond, or is it being paid back? We will, uh, debt service will be the responsibility of the Police Athletic League. Thank you. And, and as far as the kitchen goes as well, uh, we, we're hoping to get some in kind. We've had, already had people making inquiries. And one of the reasons that we think it's very important to have that kitchen is a lot of the kids that we have come in off the street, they don't know how to prepare food. They don't, they don't have those skills. And uh, we'd also like to use it for, with their help using it as fundraising. As I said, put on pancake breakfast, put on spaghetti dinners, and things like that. Other than Barry, then Shay. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Chief, Chiefs, um, is this citywide? Uh, I know we, we talk about the inner city, kids going over there. It should be a follow-up. Go ahead. Well, one of the things that we've always uh, thought at Pal, we've talked about it for years, is that the west side is isolated. And eventually what we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to have a mechanism where we can transport kids from the west side or maybe South Elm. And, and we'd like to be able to do that. And, and one of the other things that we'd like to do right now, for, besides volunteers, we have one officer that uh, the chief has uh, assigned there. And he does a remarkable job. But other police athletic league, leagues across the country, with Nashua, for example, has a uh, civilian employee. We'd like to be able to have a civilian that not only would be there to coordinate activities, but also be responsible for fundraising and, and things like that. And we have, as I say, we have students from colleges that, that come in as well and volunteer. 
follow up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because that, that would be my concern. I'd certainly appreciate if uh, kids from the west side would be welcome over there. Uh, and if it does come down to busing issues, that's something we'd have to work on. I know back in the days when I was growing up, when we were down in South Elm, <clears throat> they didn't have a PAL, but they kind of did because Dan Goonan and Mike Walsh would come down to the Elmwood project and, and uh, work with the kids down there. So I think it's a great, great idea. I'm glad the police are getting involved with the kids. They certainly uh, look up to the police and uh, it's great that they, they're showing the respect tonight and I thank them for coming. Thanks. Alderman Shea. Uh, thank you. And this is more of a commentary. Um, I grew up in that section of the city. I know St. Cecilia's Hall. I used to go to movies there. But I can't tell you how wonderful it is because the many fights that I had were in the back street. And they were, <laughs> and now the kids are learning how to fight and so forth. And I think it's great. I, I, I can't tell you how important it is for these kids to have relationships with the police department as well as each other so that they can really learn how important it is in life to come from Laurel Street and become a school principal and become an alderman and become, and these guys can do the same thing. My hat's out to them because I could never speak in front of a group at the age of 16 and so forth, but I think it's so important for us to support this. I think it's absolutely necessary. We should support the young and we should support the old and we should support definitely this project 100%. I can't say enough for it. Thank you. I know that the board has um, already contributed $25,000 of CDBG funds from last year that we had uh, in an account. I know that went forward and it's in that part of that 130000 that they've raised. I don't think anybody's going to stop raising money and I think that I talked to Bill Sanders about this the other day. Uh, we can propose a $500,000 bond. He's not going to go out and sell a bond probably until next year. So if they raise $300,000, that would reduce the bond amount that they would have to pay back to 200, and there's nothing that says that they can't raise it all, and we wouldn't have a bond. Uh, I'm, I'm working with Leon now to see if we can't find some CDBG funds uh, to contribute, and I certainly would come back to the board. I can tell you that I've seen the other three projects that they've done. When folks come forward and they bring $400,000 of in-kind, to a project, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of people working to make sure a project gets finished. I would think that we as a city can step up and help them out. We're not going to be um, having to worry about the bond. I think that that bond will be paid off long before the first uh, bond is issued for it that's been sold for it. And I think that that's what they're looking at. I think that the 130000 you will see in your package tonight, as a matter of fact, uh, that waste management, uh, when we were at the table negotiating the final contract, uh, that uh, I understood that his son is a new police officer, and he said, are we all done, Mayor? And I said, no, I only have one more request. And he said, what's that? And I said, well, if you give it to me, I'll stop, but if you don't give it to me, I'm going to continue asking. And I said, if you can make a $25,000 contribution to the MPAL, and he agreed uh, to do that, and certainly I thanked him for it, but I think that uh, this board is working hard to raise the money. I know that there's an awful lot of volunteers out there working hard, and I would hope that this board would support them. Why are we talking about it now? Because the turnaround time isn't a three-year project. I was amazed when I saw the Kroll House and we cut, we actually uh, took a shovel of dirt and moved it the very first day, and then 30 days later, it was done. Girls Inc. was a 30-day project. So these projects aren't six months or eight months. The MPAL building they're talking about doing in the month of May, and everybody's loaded up and ready to go. So until there's a commitment that the financial uh, money that they need to do some of the other projects, this board, uh, I would ask them that uh, in the great time of Christmas, it would be a wonderful time that we think about moving this project forward. Alderman Kachintonis. Sure. Motion to move the project forward. Second. Second by Alderman Shea. Discussion on the motion. Half a million. Yeah, That's half a million. With the motion, well, we're approving it today, but I don't think that uh, when the project is completed, Alderman, that it will be a half a million dollars. 
because they're going to continue raising it. They're at 130, so we're looking at somewhere around 370 now uh, moving forward. And I think that uh, the, the, the easy part of raising dollars is going to go forward. Alderman O'Neill. I spent 19 very good years as a director at PAL. I just think it should follow a normal course of action and go to a committee and work its way back. That's how we do all of the bonding in the city, CIP. including our own. So that would be my recommendation. It may not meet their timeline, but that's how we do business in the city. So um, that would be my recommendation to my colleagues. Yeah. Alderman Shea. Thank you, Your Honor. We always make exceptions for different things. And whether or not we want to make exceptions for this, I am in favor of making an exception for this, even though we aren't following necessarily uh, the usual way of funding. But this seems to be so, I, I, I can't put it into words necessarily, but I think it's, it's such a worthwhile project that we shouldn't quiver over whether we follow um, protocol in this case. I think it's, it's very important that we get this, that we let them get the support of the city so they can go out now and also have other vendors contribute to what you hope they will do. So the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be. The sooner we act, the better it's going to be in my judgment. So I would offer for that particular motion that we started as soon as possible. Thank you. Anybody else? Motion is before us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'll go on record as abstaining. <laughs>